In the gospel today, we heard that Jesus opened the ears of this man and also gave him the power to speak. And that was the fulfillment of the prophecy that we heard in the first reading. As the chosen people of God, they were during the time of the second exile in Babylon. Isaiah tried to give them hope that God is going to fulfill the Messiah role. He is going to open the eyes of the blind. He is going to open the ears of the deaf. He is going to make the desert cool because he still remembers that what he has sworn to their fathers, that he would be their God, and they will always be his chosen people. Now, there are some things in the Gospel that we need to think very seriously about them. First and foremost, Jesus come now to the Decapolis. The Decapolis is like the Gentile away from the Jews. And there is this man who had this impediment of not speaking, and he was deaf. And they begged him because they heard how much he did uh, other places to lay hands on him. And we see that Jesus did something extraordinary. He takes his finger and put it in the ear. He spit on his fingers and put him on the tongue. And then he cried to God the Father and said, Father, you always hear me open the, up the ears of this man. Give him the power of speech so that my words will be confirmed by this miracle. So people will come to believe that you have sent him. That's when he's a growing within him. That's what he was saying to the Father. But I'd like to go today on that second reading because there is the teaching of the early church and the teaching for each one of us. Remember that St. James is the first apostle among the twelve who died martyr. Remember that. He is the first apostle who died martyr. After Stephen was destroyed by stone, they stoned him, they begin to go after the leaders of the church. And James happened to be the bishop of Jerusalem. They went after him and they tried, not tried, they destroyed him. But before he was martyred for the faith, he is writing to his people who are Jewish by birth. And also he is writing to them because he is their bishop. And today St. James said to us, when you come together in the assembly, make sure that you don't make any judgment. A judgment that separates the congregation. Because somebody has beautiful rings on his finger and dressed properly, you say to him, come and sit here. But somebody who dressed in shabby clothes, you say for him, go and sit there or sit at my feet. And don't say we don't do it because we do it. And that's why today the church reminds us of the words of James. That not those who look nice in our eyes are the most favored by God, but those who are poor, those who have nothing, those who have that life is totally dependent on the Father. And if you don't want to believe me, I want you to look at the Blessed Mother, whose yesterday we celebrate her birthday. On the 8th of December, she was conceived in the womb of Saint Anne, and nine months later, we celebrate her birthday. What Mary said when she went to visit Elizabeth? When Elizabeth said to her, Who I am, the mother of my God, will come to me. And Mary said, God looks at my nothingness and raise me. Raise me that now, from now on, all generation will call me blessed. Because I did what he wants from me. It's very well. And that was the trademark of Jesus, who said to you and to me, I come not to be served, but I come that you might learn from me, because I come to serve. And that's why he was born in Bethlehem in a stable, because he comes to us as a power. 
first of all, dressed in this clothes, you have to be a pauper. Because this clothes that we have, this flesh, is dependency. We have to feed it, we have to take care of it, get sick, and lots of things that we do. And then, not only he was born as a pauper, but he died as a pauper on the cross. And that is to reveal to us that God is not impressed with the riches of the world. He can be born in a palace. Everything will be catered to him. But he selects that he will be born power. Because he wants to teach us that those who are blended are those who are poor in spirit. Because they are sons and daughters of the Father. And that's why St. James reminds us that we are going to testify how much we really are part of of the mission of Christ, how much we care for those who are less fortunate. What good it is that every Sunday you come to Mass and they say Mass. But somebody will walk in and he is asking for help and we close our hearts to him. What good it is that you go to Mass and then your neighbor is experienced the most horrible situation, a tragedy, a death, a sickness, and you remain, as we say, unconcerned. Remember, dear people, when we were come, when we were brought to the fountain of baptism, we died to our ego and pride in that baptism, and we put on Christ. And that's why we are called Christians, because we are followers of the first Christian ever walked this earth, Jesus Christ. And now our actions is not the ego that we had before, but our actions has to be the actions of Christ. In fact, he said to us, if you love me, love one another as I have loved you. And how he loves us? He loves us by feeding us when we are hungry. He loves us by healing us when we are sick. He loves us by really come to us in our mourning. He loves us even when he took off his cloak and went in front of Peter and washed his feet. And he said to him, because Peter refused the washing of his feet, but he knows that few months ago he said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. When he saw that God in front of him wants to wash his feet, Peter said, Not me, Lord. I would never allow this to happen to me. If I don't wash your feet, you don't belong to my club. And Peter said, not my feet, but for my body. He said, no, whoever is clean does not need to be washed. And he said to him, Peter, what I have done to you, you as the head of the church, you have to do it to the rest. In fact, from this, the people come to know you all by the side, from the love, from the compassion, from the outgoing that you have for people, from the hospitality you give to people from being a welcoming person. You don't make that distinction between rich and poor, young and old, that you, are, that you are for everybody, that you do the best you can to reach everybody. My dear people, this is very serious because in our liturgies, many times, we divide ourselves. We think that because we are church goers and we were from day one, we were born, we went to church, we are better off than other people. Remember, we are all in the same boat. A few moments from now, you say, Lamb of God, who take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You said, Lord, have mercy, means Father, have mercy. Christ, have mercy, means Jesus, have mercy. Lord, have mercy, Holy Spirit, have mercy. All of us. And even in the creed, you are going to say, that Jesus died for all of us. So all of us were in the same boat. And that's why it is very important that we won't come together in the assembly. We are all brothers and sisters because Jesus said, now that you belong to me, when you pray, you say, our Father. That's what he said to Monday. After the resurrection, he said, go to tell my brothers. I am going to their God and my God, to my Father and your Father. 
with Jesus we become brothers and sisters and together we have now to the power of the Holy Spirit to aid and to even voice our voice to the Father and say, Abba Father. My dear people, when we come to the celebration of the Eucharist, we come together as one baptized people. We all share for one baptism. That's what we say in the Greek. We believe in one baptism. Not the baptism of John the Baptist, not the baptism of something else, but the baptism that Christ gave us. The baptism that we are immersed in the life of the Trinity. When we come to Mass, we share in one sacrifice. That's the idea that we have one order in church. I don't say Mass there, I don't say Mass there, I say Mass here. One is the order and one is Jesus. One is the priesthood that we share, not seven million priests, one priesthood. And the order is not Carmel there, and the order there is Jesus. With all my defects, with all my shortcomings, I lend my lungs, I lend my hands and my voice to him. So that at that very moment I become persona Christi. We share from one loaf, we drink from one chalice. And that's why we are called to be one church. Now did you get the message? So this idea, we belong to St. Francis, and we belong to St. Gregory, and we belong to Mary Mother. We are not belong to nothing. We belong to one Christ. Where there is Christ, there I will be. Many people have lots of things in their head that does not make them church. We need to learn how to be church. And to be church means to be one. Oneness is the call that we have. At padrem, at, at sum, at absum sum, that means as we are one, I want them to be one. As we are one Father, I pray that they will be one. This was the, the desire and the prayer of Jesus at the Last Supper. This is the idea of participation at the Mass. The Mass is not the priest's Mass. Our Mass. Look at the ritual. Pray, my brothers and sisters. You are including in this. Because that sacrifice is the sacrifice of the church. It's not my sacrifice. I happen to be here today because God wanted to be here today. Tomorrow somebody else will be here. And that is why we as the church are here. To pray that all of us who are going, who came from different walks of life, who comes from a week of work, who comes with a lot of blessings, who comes with a lot of grief and heart, heavy hearts. The beginning of this week, we were lucky. Two, three blocks away from us there was a, a storm, a tornado. Are you not ready to say thank you to God? that he did not wipe us out. Are you not thankful that we have food on the table when we go home? Are we not thankful that we have clothes and shelter? Are we not thankful for what we have? And that's what you put on that pattern, all of you. That's why when the usher comes to invite you to bring the gifts, it's not God, oh, it's not me, it's not, it's you. Because you are contributing to the sacrifice. In fact, you are bringing the sacrifice of all of us here. Put them on the pattern and I offer to the eternal Father. I offer to God all your blessings. Is that what we say in the Mass? This is bread that we receive. Fruit of the hands. Work of human hands. And now what you have given us, we offer it to you. So that you will transfer, transform it into the body and blood of yourself. If we only understand what takes place there, I guarantee, I guarantee, 
you will be lined up every morning to the cross. Because this is what Mass is all about. You are going to see through the entire Mass, whether it is Gloria, whether it is Eucharistic prayer, whether it is the collect the beginning of the of the Mass and the opening prayer and the closing and the offertory. Today, look at the offertory. Is all glory and praise. Glory to your majesty. Fitting service. Why? That's why we are here. To adore you. To give you thanks. Because that is the call of the people who believe come together to celebrate the Eucharist in the sacred liturgy. My dear people, I challenge you during the Mass. Don't let the choir inter entertain you, but you take those books in your hands and sing loud and clear to the Lord to tell Him that you are not bored to be here. Imagine you are invited to go to a wedding and all of a sudden you went to the reception you stay in a corner with a long face from here to kingdom come. The guests will come to you, or the host will come and say to you, are you all right? Why are you not joining us at table to eat? Why are you not, you know, as we say, let your hair down? Why bother come if you want to be this way? And the same thing the Lord is saying to us when we come. We're not going to be abused. The church wants the whole body to be inter in, in, in entertained during the Mass. We stand up. We use our hands. We use our eyes. We use our ears. We use our nose for the smelling of the incense. We use all that we are. Some people say up and down, up and down, because you don't understand. And for the readings, for example, we sit. But then, when the celebration of the procession of the book of the scripture of the gospel is processed, we rise up. Because we want to welcome the Lord in the other way. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Praise you that you now voice yourself to us. We are so fortunate from many people that we hear your message. We need at the consecration out of reverence for what takes place at the altar. We don't move around the church during the consecration or the mass. Sometimes you now we have to discipline ourselves about the bathrooms and this and that. If you have a problem physically, uh, medically, all right. But sometimes the children, you know, they have to visit the bathroom two times at mass. This is why the sacredness has to be uphold during the mass. Because this is the most important part of the week. When we come, not encounter with me, but encounter with your God. Who wants to come to live with you, and you come to give him your struggles. Imagine. And he said to you, come to me, O believer. Come to me who find life burdensome, and I will refresh you. That's why we come to him. And then when we have this attitude, although the problem is there, when you leave those doors, you are so full of joy. Because now you have planted within you the Lord Jesus' message, and you are now embracing the Lord Jesus who is part of you. Who is telling you now, go in the world and bring this message to other people. Other people who really are people who need to hear it. The call to evangelization. Now come your homework. I am going to begin giving homework now. From now to next Sunday, you are going to meet one person. One. Not more than one. One. And you are going to evangelize them. That person can be your daughter. That person can be your son. That person can be your neighbor. That person can be your co-worker. That person can be your best friend. Speak about Jesus to those who are news 
and those who do not hear. And the worst, the worst death is not because physically they cannot hear, but sometimes I play numb here because I don't want to hear what I want to hear. But the death, the worst one is that although they have ears, they don't want to hear. And that is the worst thing that you can encounter in your marriage, in your relationship. How many times you spoke to your husband about, we need to do something about this window. A winter is coming. Oh yes, I will do it, honey. Leave it to me, honey. I will do it. Oh yes, I will do it. Three months goes and nothing is done. God forbid you bring somebody in to do it because he gets spent because you are spending the money. But he does not want to do it because he brought it. And the same thing with and that can happen to your children, can happen to your boss. You can say that the machine is failing and this and that, and they know nothing about it. Because after all, you know, they, they will save money. Things are going all right, but we are not going to do it. And that is the same thing with the faith. We take our faith for granted and we become complex. Believe me, dear people, if all of us, hundred, how many we are followers? Hundred what? If we hundred twenty-three encounter one person, you see how many will be next week? Will be two hundred forty-six. Why we don't do it? Because the only thing I'm concerned is me. Oh, I go to church, that's all. That's why we have priests and nuns. And I will point to you, that's why with me, you share the fountain of baptism, and you become the voice, the ambassador of Christ. And so now I have warned you. I have given you the tools in your hands. I may be done after I die to account for it, but you are equal in par with me. Because at the end of the journey, when I appear in front of God, He's not going to tell me how much decoration you did in church. He's not going to tell me how much you try to have organization of parish council or how successful was your bingo. <laughs> he was going to tell me I was hungry I was thirsty, I was ill and in prison. What did you do for me? Yes, I come disguised in that shabby clothing person. And because you see the clothing, you despise me. How are you going to answer that? The message is here. You have received it. You know who is the healer. You know what Jesus wants from you. Go out now, as the priest say to you, go in peace and make your job true. So your homework for next week is one person. And I might ask questions. Not during the homily. Maybe I meet you at the door. And the teacher wants to see your paper, no? I want to see your actions. Work for the church. Love the church. Promote the church. Be proud of the gospel. And he will be proud of you in front of the Father. God bless you.